I'm Dave Asprey, the Bulletproof Executive. And here in part one, I'm gonna tell you which types of alcohol make you feel good and which types of alcohol make you feel bad. No alcohol is super healthy for you, and I don't recommend it as a way to maximize human performance, but the choices you make in what you drink affect how you're gonna think and perform and feel the next day. Here's how to do it right. Let's talk bulletproof alcohol. Actually, there's no such thing. If you really wanna kick the most ass, drinking alcohol isn't gonna help you do that. I know that it would be really convenient to think that just one or two drinks a day in moderation is somehow going to make you live longer, reverse Alzheimer's, or some other BS that someone told you. No, it doesn't look that way. And if you don't believe me, look at Dr. Amen's research on the brains of moderate drinkers. Alcohol just isn't a performance enhancing drug. As much as we would like to bend studies to make it say that it is, it's not. But it's enjoyable. It's a recreational drug. It's just one that's not very good for you. So what do you do if you're gonna drink? It turns out different alcohols have different effects on you, just like different coffees have different effects on you. Who would have thought? Or different strains of marijuana have different effects on you. This is how it works. Not all alcohol is the same. The idea that one serving of alcohol is the same as another serving of alcohol is just not true, because with the alcohol comes a lot of other stuff that's biologically active. So I've made a bulletproof infographic for you that tells you about what alcohols are the least likely to add additional toxic burden to you or contain mother nature's toxins or fungal toxins from unfiltered stuff versus filtered things. The first thing to do is pick the right alcohol. So I've got a random selection for my house. These aren't things that I particularly drink a lot of. These are because I have parties and because, well, at parties, sometimes we drink. This is a local small batch organic potato vodka. Organic because residues can actually make it through the distillation and charcoal filtration process, but really not very many. Any distilled, properly distilled quality vodka is going to be at the most bulletproof end. All you're doing is dealing with alcohol then, not all the other byproducts that are formed during the creation of alcohol. So the hard stuff is actually better for you than beer and wine, even though those are delicious, they have a higher biological cost. Potato vodka, good call. Next on the bulletproof list would be a really high quality whiskey or a gin. I have here the, let's see, Bruchladic. Okay, I do not speak Scottish very well. And this is an organic single malt Scotch whiskey. And it comes in a cool canister. Keep it out of the light. And this is mostly gone because every time the Bulletproof team comes here, this is what they go for. This is really good stuff. And they call it the organic. And it is amazingly good whiskey. This is better for you than your favorite red wine, even though the red wine is delicious. What else could we have here? The other distilled things. Here's a local, from actually right down the street from where I live, gin. This is a grain-based gin, which isn't ideal. I try to not eat things made out of grains because, well, grains are just not that good. But the odds are that if you have something that's distilled and filtered, you're probably fine. So this is a good quality gin. You could also go for a little bit more of the Chinese medicinal sort of effect, some Ayurvedic. This is absinthe, and this brand is called Taboo, and it's also made here in British Columbia. You can get this in some countries, not others. And with this, you don't need to pour it over a burning sugar cube. That only became popular in the 60s, but it's a strong bitter that can have an effect on your constitution depending on whether you're pitta or vata from the Ayurvedic tradition. Plus, it just smells good. I've always liked this stuff. It does have a few more toxins in it than the other things, but it may have digestive effects that are good for you. Then we get into wine. It turns out dry white French wine is much less likely to have okra toxin A, which is the most common mold derived toxin that happens in grapes and comes out in wine. Standards in the US for this toxin in wine exist, but they're very, very low standards. In other words, you're allowed to have a lot of it in there. If you get non-export grade European wines, these are ones meant for consumption in France or Italy, for instance, they have very, very strict standards. They have a little yellow band around the top. You'll feel different when you drink that wine versus the wine that you really like. I've lived in Silicon Valley for a long time. I like California wines. There are a lot of California wines that have higher levels of okra toxin A. And long before it becomes an immediate risk to health, it actually just makes you feel bad the next day. It gives you achy joints, a little itchiness, a little brain fog, sluggishness, food cravings the next day, stuff like that. So what are you gonna do if you still enjoy wine? Well, one, this is from right down the road. This is a Cherry Point Estate uh, sparkling white wine. 
Definitely want to go organic if you're going to do it. Here's a red wine that's uh, Italian, and it is an organic Italian wine. So you can do this, but wine and beer simply doesn't have filtration in it. They'll have sediment filtration, but the actual yeast byproducts are still there, so your body has to do that. The main toxin that forms in wine and coffee and chocolate and some other food groups, but those are the big ones, it takes 35.3 days for your body to eliminate it. The only other animal that's as bad as us at eliminating that is the pig. It turns out rats can eliminate this very quickly in their livers, so it doesn't have nearly the effects on rats that it has on people. This is why I focus on that toxin and a bunch of others that amplify its effects when I'm making Bulletproof Coffee. Now that you know the types of alcohols can affect how you feel, and you can choose alcohols that are more effective, in part two, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do to counteract the bad things alcohol does to your body, so you can be in charge of your biology and enjoy the alcohol without feeling crappy the next day.